welcome back students uh, we were discussing about the uh, partial differential equations in the last lecture where we have seen the elliptical uh, or pd parabolic and hyperbolic pd and we also saw in the last class the start uh, the some of the concepts of the finite differences so we are going to proceed forward now and talk about elementary finite difference quotients. So derived from Taylor series expansions, so the elementary finite difference quotients are real derived from the Taylor series expansions. So example is that uij is the x component of velocity ui plus 1 at point i plus 1 comma j can be expressed, so you see uij is the x component of the velocity, okay. ui plus 1 comma j at a point i plus 1 comma j can be expressed in terms of Taylor series expansion about point i comma j as, so ui plus 1 comma j can be written as ui comma j plus delta u del u del x at i comma j into delta x plus del square u by del x square at i comma j multiplied by delta x square by 2 and so on. So, this is using Taylor series expansion alright. So, this actually can be truncated after finite number of terms. Hmm. I mean we can decide 3 terms or 4 terms or 5 terms. So, we can actually we have decided to truncate it after 3 terms. So, u i plus 1 comma j can be written as u i comma j plus del u del x multiplied by delta x del square u del x square into delta x square by 2 and these are evaluated at i comma j both of these terms. So, this equation is second order accurate because we have a square term del square u by del x square. So, if you want to make it first order equate it accurate it can be written as u i plus 1 comma j is u i comma j plus del u del x evaluated at i comma j into delta x. So, this is first in, fir in first order so it is first order accurate. So, it is now obvious that the truncation error can be reduced by retaining more term in the Taylor series expansion of the corresponding derivative and reducing the magnitude of delta x. So, one important thing to note here is that there is a truncation error right. So, the full value will be the exact and perfect value, but we have decided to truncate some of those terms. Truncate means leave out those terms correct. So, this error can be reduced by retaining first way is retaining more terms in the Taylor series expansion right. The more the number of terms the less will be the error. <coughs> and if we reduce the magnitude of delta x then also that can be there right because this delta x is reduced then delta x square x cube will be even more and more uh, uh, less. Therefore, the, the truncation of those terms we do will be almost negligible. So, from the above equation you see the first order equation and the second order equation if we write we can evaluate del u del x at i comma j which means del u, u of i plus 1 comma j minus u of i j divided by delta x plus truncation error whatever we have left out. Okay. So, this is actually called the first order forward difference forward because we have i plus 1. So, if say this is i comma j and this is i plus 1 uh, sorry this is i plus 1 line and this is 
j line this is j minus 1 and this is j plus 1 and then that means it is forward i plus 1. Similarly, we can also write del u del x i comma j in the backward direction that means u i comma j minus u i minus 1 comma j by delta x plus whatever the truncation error is and this is called the first order backward difference. So, now you understand the difference between first order far forward and first order fine the first order backward difference. So, in the uh, forward we have i plus 1 minus i and in the backward we have i minus i minus 1. So, i indicates the indices at the grids all right of the grids. There can be another way where you can actually you know. So, let us say this is i, this is i minus 1, this is i plus 1. So, you can just do this one dead. Okay. So, first write the equation between these two points, then write between these two points and subtract. This is what we have done here. You know. So, this actually gives the difference between u i plus 1 minus u i minus 1. You see? and then it will be divided by 2 delta x because the length between this is delta x and this is delta x. So, this total becomes 2 delta x. So, this is another way and this is called the second order central difference because we are calculating what were we calculating again drawing this is i comma j this is i plus 1 comma uh, i sorry. i minus 1 comma j this is i plus 1 comma j. So, we are actually calculating d del y by oh, i minus 1 i i plus 1. So, we are actually calculating del y by del x at point i comma j. So, it is that there we are calculating the value of dy by dx here using the point back here and here that is why it is called the second order central difference this is central. In the backward you see we are calculating at i using the one there minus the one at the back here we are calculating at i using the one in front minus the current one all right so we have to put time derivative as forward difference and space derivative as central difference okay the call the ftcs forward time central space so, what we do? We have to put time derivative as forward difference. So, time as forward difference because time cannot be in the back. So, we will always have to be forward and for the space we use central difference that is the most standard practice and this is called as FTCS forward time central space. All right. So, you are expected to know these terminologies what FTCS is, what is forward difference, what is backward difference, what is central difference uh, in for time derivative which is used for space which is most commonly used. So, for space we said that it was a central difference for time it is the forward difference. So, terms like that are quite important. So, we write u i in this is this is for the time you see this n. So, for so, we write u i n plus 1 minus u i n is alpha u i plus 1 n. So, these i plus 1 and i and i minus 1 are all calculated at the previous time or at the current time. Okay. Suppose we are at let us say we are at we are at time t is equal to 1 seconds we have the solutions we want to calculate for t is equal to 2. 
So, velocity at t this is at t is equal to 1 second this is also the yes ok. This is also at t is equal to 1. So, you see n n n. So, these all things we know from the previous time step what we need to know is u i at n plus 1. So, there is a term called consistency now. So, what actually is consistency? So, a finite difference representation of a partial differential equation is said to be consistent if we can show that the difference between the P d and its finite difference representation vanishes as mesh is refined. So, this in a, in a different word if this representation of a, I mean see we, we said that we are going to represent partial differential equation in an algebraic form correct. So, this algebraic form is currently finite difference method right we are using the method of finite difference to represent it into algebraic form. So, this solution is consistent if we are able to show that the real solution that is the PDE solution the difference of that with the one that is obtained using the current method that is a finite difference method will go away will be 0 or it starts to go to 0 as we have gone delta x is refined as mesh is refined as max goes to 0 alright as the mesh is refined. This is the you remember we had this limit delta x goes to 0 in your limit analysis. So, limit of mesh goes to 0 the partial differential equation minus the finite difference equation goes to 0 if mesh the mesh size goes to 0. If we are able to show that that means our solution of the partial differential equation using using the finite difference representation is consistent. There is another term called convergence. So, the solution of the algebraic equation that approximate a partial differential equation same thing ok is convergent if it approaches the exact solution of the P d for each value of the independent variable as grid spacing tends to 0 ok. So, the solution of this if the, the, this solution is said to be convergent if this solution approaches exact solution of the P d for each value of the independent variable as the grid spacing tends to 0 not the combination of different variables. If for each an individual for each x and y for example, x and y are the independent variables or for each of these x and y this should converge to the real original solution of the P d then that means the solution is convergent. So, the requirement is u i at n is equal to u bar x i comma y n as delta x delta t goes to 0 alright, where u bar x i y n is the solution of the system of algebraic equations. Now, there is something called the error and the stability analysis. The numerical solution which we have obtained using the uh, finite difference scheme, they are influenced by two sources of error. One is the discretization. The one, I mean, the errors are introduced due to two methods. One of which is discretization. This is the difference between the exact solution of the partial differential equation and exact solution of the corresponding finite difference equation. All right, truncation errors. Second, there is round off error. So, this is a numerical error introduced for a repetitive number of calculations in which the computer is constantly rounding the number to some decimal point. Suppose the accuracy of the computer is let us say 3 decimal units, ok. And if our solution is 0, point, I mean 1.117985 or let us say assume the value of pi 
pi is 3.14 and it goes on right. So, when the computer is let us say third uh, okay, accurate up to third order, the computer will keep on rounding the values. Therefore, there will be one error introduced due to the rounding off. So, one due to discretization, second is due to the rounding off. All right. So, this are the two errors that we had talked about. Now, we can proceed to another concept in the computational fluid dynamics module that is von Neumann stability analysis. So, what is this stability analysis? We say if A is the analytical solution of a partial difference accuracy and D is the exact solution from a real computer with finite accuracy. Okay? So, A is the analytical solution of partial difference accuracy and he D is the exact solution from a real computer with finite accuracy and N is the numerical simul simulation from a real computer with finite accuracy. Okay? So, A is analytical solution, D is exact solution, exact means perfect solution and N is the numerical simulation. If we use these three terms, okay? then the discretization error is A minus D is equal to truncation error is equal to the error introduced due to treatment of boundary condition whereas, the round off error epsilon is N minus D. Now, you understand these round off error and the discretization error, discretization error is A minus D. Okay? So, discretization A minus D. So, the difference of the analytical solution of the partial difference accuracy minus exact solution from a real computer with finite accuracy, whereas the round off error is N minus D. All right, so this is von Neumann stability analysis and we can write N is equal to D plus E, D plus epsilon. So, the numerical solution N must satisfy the finite difference equation like this. All right and D is the exact solution of the finite difference equation hence it exactly satisfies this one A and B. Right? A was the finite difference in the first page that we saw A you see this is A D is the exact solution of the finite difference equation and it exactly satisfies this. So, N will satisfy both. So, if we perform A minus B, so epsilon of N plus 1 minus epsilon I of N delta T will be written. So, from this equation we can see that the error also satisfies the difference equation. For stability, the errors must shrink from step n to n plus 1. So, the mandatory condition is epsilon i of n plus 1 divided by epsilon of i at time n must be less than 1 because it is supposed to decrease. If assume that the distribution of errors along the x axis is given by a Fourier series in x and the time wise distribution is exponential in t then we can write epsilon x comma t is e to the power a t. So, this is the equation using which it is given. All right, L is the unit complex number All right, or i capital I and k is the wave number. This is very complex. Since the behavior of each term of series is same as the series itself, Hence, let us deal with just one term of the series and write. So, we deal see there are lot of term in this series right E A T is the sum of E I K M X. So, we just you know use only one term and we write E of M X comma T is E to the E to the power A T E to the power I K M X 
and if we substitute this equation in the error equation, you see that er error equation that we had got, this was the error equation and if we substitute this in the error equation, we are going to get e a complex equation like this, alright. Now, if we divide this equation by e to the power a t e to the power i k m of x, we are going to get on the left hand side, we are going to get e to the power a delta t because t and t will get cancelled is equal to a more simplified solution e to the power i k m delta x because x and x plus delta x. So, this will remain delta x here also delta x all right and yeah this will completely go away this will you know all right so on dividing by e to the power alpha t e a t e to the power i k m of x we can therefore write using this equation from here, we can write e to the power a alpha t can be written as 1 plus alpha 2 delta t plus divided by delta x square. See you see this term here, okay. Or we can write it in terms also of sin square by 2 term. So, it becomes 1 minus 4 alpha delta t by delta x square sin square k m delta x by 2. The derivation is not in your scope, but we will finally look at the answer, the result that we are going to get. Therefore, we can write this e to the power n plus 1. See, we have got e to the power a delta t. Therefore, this error we can actually write e to the power alpha t plus delta t into e to the power i k m x divided by e to the power a t e to the power i k m x is equal to e to the power a delta a delta t. So, this equation must be satisfied for stability. mod of 1 minus 4 alpha delta t by delta x square sin square k m delta x by 2 must be less than 1 all right or in other words this equation I think if you can remember this equation it will be quite good. So, just remember this final equation not the entire derivation, but you should be able to follow what has been done from the lectures. All right. So, this means what does this mean is? So, see this sin squared k m delta x by 2, you know. So, the condition can be written to be alpha delta t by delta x square should be less than or equal to half because this will always be less than 1. So, this is the final solution that we get for stability, very important. So, you should remember this one as well and this one as well, alright. So, the final solution here alpha delta t by delta x square less than or equal to half gives the stability requirement for which the solution of the difference will be stable and solution will proceed in stable manner if it satisfies the above relation. So, which relation? This relation, okay, that is the final solution. So, the above mentioned analysis using Fourier series is called von Neumann stability analysis. So, 
so you must be in principle knowing what is von Neumann stability analysis. So using this we are actually going to you know until the, the concepts which we have learned till now we are going to you know solve this uh, one question using this now. Okay. So the question is classify the steady two dimensional velocity potential equation which is 1 minus m square phi x x plus phi y y is equal to 0 when m is less than 1 and secondly when m is greater than 1 and third when m is equal to 0. So, like always we are going to use the white screen for this. Okay. So, solution 2. All right. So, first we write down what is given to us 1 minus m square into phi x x plus phi y y is equal to 0. All right. So, therefore, a is equal to 1 minus m square. So, you remember that we said discriminant of b square minus 4 ac we have to calculate you remember that part. Okay. Here there is no b, but c is equal to 1. All right. So, I will uh, let me take you to that because that is quite important thing to you know see a f x x plus b f x y plus c f y y plus d f x plus e f y plus f f is equal to g. So, let me just quickly just yeah here. So, you, you see our equation right it is I will write down here. So, it is 1 minus m square f x x instead of f x x we write f phi x x plus there is no phi x y. So, 0 into phi x y plus c is 1 into phi y y we have plus there is no only f phi x. So, we just write 0 into phi x plus 0 into phi y plus 0 into phi is equal to 0 that is the so, when we write down what we say A is 1 minus m square and B is 0 okay, and C is 1 because only these three terms are being used in the discriminant because. So, you see the classification depends on B square minus 4 AC right good. So, see we have to classify the steady two dimensional velocity potential all right very good. So, I think uh, um, I think it would be better if we start doing this problem in our next class because uh, otherwise uh, this is a slightly long problem and needs little bit more detail. Uh, to solve. So, I think I will end the class today here and we start with the solution of this question in our next lecture. Thank you so much.